It is Saturday morning cartoons, and here we have the sacred tablets of the Ten Command Rants of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to be disrespectful or anything else. This is from the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, and we've talked about it before, and. Uh, and today actually is the, the third day, or it'll be the third night of, of Hanukkah. And uh, I wish Happy Hanukkah to all of our, to everyone, actually. Uh, and uh, the reason I'm talking about uh, uh, this today is because of, a, of one of those synchronistic miracles uh, that uh, seemingly have nothing to do with each other, uh, but actually do if you open your eyes and listen to it, or or open your ears and smell it. Okay. Look, I've got a I've got a new book. Okay, it arrived at my doorstep uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, it's been by uh, Beth Shiva. Ash. Okay. Now, I've been using her Shimatria Gamatria calculator for some time now. I, I, I've posted a, a link to it because it is the practical value of, of looking up Hebrew words to to even chicken Kabbalists such as myself. It's just a marvelous tool. So I really was anxious to uh, uh, see this book now. I haven't read the the whole thing because it is wonderfully scholarly beautiful uh it's a tech it's a text i'll use this uh, uh, uh for forever uh and it and it sort of goes at at kabbalah uh, from almost uh, a traditional uh, exegesis on scripture and things like that which i've uh, uh i've more or less stayed away from because the uh, the Bible has never been for me a specifically uh, um, you know uh, particularly more supernatural than the phone book as far far as uh, I'm I'm concerned. But the Kabbalistic uh, uh, techniques in the uh, the core of Kabbalah is is not a religious thing the core of Kabbalah is is a is a way of thinking a way of of, uh, of reorganizing and dissecting uh, the universe around you uh, so, so in other words the chicken Kabbalah okay I use Kabbalah for uh, uh, how it relates to tarot how it relates to uh, um, the initiatory expansion of consciousness up the tree of life things like that so uh kabbalah is a is a vital tool uh, but i i i don't spend a great deal of time on exegesis or dissecting or analyzing uh, uh, bible bible verses uh, this is giving me a new approach at, at looking at that uh, uh, in a in a chicken Kabbalah kind of way. So I'm really ex excited to uh, 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 to read it and what I've seen so far uh, and what I've uh, been exposed to other aspects of her work. I, I, I really respect it. Uh, and as you can see, I'm wearing the rabbi's uh, uh, beanie this morning because <laughs> I want to uh, talk again about uh, the the Ten Command Rants of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Okay. Now I know that's kind of goofy and silly and a play on words and things like that. Uh, but I do want to talk about it because it's also what has been completely. I've been absorbed in this uh, this issue, and I probably will re remain absorbed in this issue for uh, uh, the rest of the year because uh, of uh, the fact that I'm 
spending many hours a day working on a new book. Uh, but I want to uh, read the Ten Commandments, t t Ten Command Rants, uh, b because this is sort of the, the, the approach of Kabbalah, not from a religious or sectarian uh, uh, point of view, but from the, the most generic of generic use of Kabbalah. And I'm going to first of all read the, the Ten Command rants to you because it'll only take a second. And then um, I'm, I'm going to read a couple of my comments on, uh, on it from the book, The Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. The Ten Commandments of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. First, first command rant. All is one. Second command rant. The first command rant is a lie. All is nothing. Third command rant. There really isn't a creation. Time or space, heaven or earth. But there is a you. The fourth command rant. We perceive there is a creation, time, space, heaven, and earth, because of a fundamental defect in our powers of perception. Fifth command rant. This defect cannot be repaired, but it can be overcome. Sixth command rant. In order to overcome our defective powers of perception, we must be willing to abuse them until they break. Now, of course, I say don't blind yourself or, okay. Seventh command rant. Everything in heaven and earth is connected to everything in heaven and earth. Eighth. Everything in heaven and earth is the reflection of everything in heaven and earth. The ninth command rant, everything in heaven and earth contains the pattern of everything in heaven and earth. And the tenth command rant, look hard enough at anything and you will eventually see everything. And it's that tenth command rant. Look hard enough at anything and you'll eventually see everything, which gives us cause to rethink. If you can look hard enough, like the Buddha suggests, at uh, five pounds of flax and see the Buddha in five pounds of flax or, or ox excrement, you can certainly see it in the holy book of your choice. And uh, a great deal of, of uh, Kabbalistic literature of the past is based on looking hard at somebody's spiritual literature of their choice. Now, Jake uh, Stratton Kent wrote a marvelous uh, book using the, the uh, English alphabet based on the holy scriptures of, of, of uh, the Book of the Law and the holy books of Thelema uh, in the Torturous Serpent. Uh, and that's a wonderful approach uh, uh, to that from the Thelemic magician's point of view. But let me just share with you what the, what the rabbi was getting at. Uh, and I'm going to read this all is nothing thing. Okay. Uh, first command rant is all is one. Okay. Um, and it's, okay. this statements are hardly a uh, veil rending revelation to anyone who's even dabbled slightly with abstract thought. It's easy to imagine in the universe, in the universe lumped together into one big something beyond which there is nothing. 
But it's the concept of nothing that sends our primate minds into a tailspin. Now, the very young chicken cabalist might be tempted to think that this divine nothingness is kind of a negative eno. That's one spelled backwards, which is also the name of a laxative. Okay. A negative eno from which one somehow popped into being as if from behind a mysterious looking glass. But this, as the second command will demonstrate, this nothing is something else altogether. I'm going to talk about this nothing. Second command rant is, first command rant is a lie, all is nothing. Astronomers and physicists tell us, us there is more nothing in the universe than anything else. In fact, they now say most of the matter and energy in the cosmos, well over 90%, is somehow hiding in all this nothingness. Come to think about it, okay, come to think about it. I got to go past the illustration here. The stuff that we can actually see is mostly nothing. There's infinitely more in an atom than a proton. There is infinitely more nothing in an atom than protons and electrons. There is more nothing in our bodies than anything else. We're full of tubes and pockets and sacs and bladders and cavities and chambers and openings and voids. Every cell of your body is mostly nothing. When a cell starts to divide to produce more cells, it first folds in on itself to create more precious nothing to work with. Even your brain grew out of the nothingness of this embryonic internal disappearing act. Physicists can't even say with any certainty that matter, as most people think of it, exists at all. The components of atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons, quarks, charms, etc., are not matter. They're tendencies. Tell that to your head the next time you slam it getting into your car. Physicists and mystics are now using the same vocabulary, and it's only a matter of time before learned men and women of science will announce clearly what Kabbalists have known and been saying cryptically for centuries. Okay, now I'm going to skip ahead here to the... No, I'm not going to skip ahead. It's too good. Elements of creation as we know it, minerals, metals, animals, people, plants, and stars, light and energy, are merely husks of an invisible universal force that sustains the entire cosmos. We're like dead skin cells that have flaked off from the body of the unmanifest super being. This force, this nothingness, is better than reality. It's undiluted, unlimited potentiality. It is the ultimate reality, and the nature of that reality is pure consciousness. The first thing that attracted to me, uh, to the, attracted me to the Kabbalah as a young hatchling, was the concept that everything proceeded out of this nothing. That made nothing the ultimate creator, not the Elohim or Jehovah, or any other ill-tempered bullies of the Old Testament. I like the idea of brooding and inscrutable nothing behind everything in the universe. You can think about the Elohim creating stuff like crazy. You can think about yod heh vav -Heh Elohim blowing life into Adam's nose. You can think about a sneaky, stinky cloud killing the firstborn babies in Egypt, and you can think about all that stuff, but you can't 
think about nothing. Anything you can think about, anything you can capture and hold in your mind's eye is automatically disqualified from infinityhood and can't possibly be the ultimate deity. Kabbalistic tradition informs us that everything proceeded from the Great One, and the Great One proceeded from a very special kind of nothing. Actually, three special kinds of nothing. Beginning chicken Kabbalists need not spend a great deal of time trying to grasp this concept because first, it can't be understood. And second, if you did understand it, stand it, there would no longer be a need for you to study anything. However, as you approach the meditative summit of your career as a chicken Kabbalist, the irrational mystery of these three kinds of nothing will increasingly absorb you. For this reason, I offer the following. The first kind of nothing is called Ain. And I'll, I won't do this for every one of them, but you'll see see the Hebrew there, Ain. Aleph Yud Nun. And that's a Nun Fidel, so it looks like a, a dental mirror. <coughs> <coughs> the first kind of nothing is called Ain. This nothing is really nothing. Not even the concept of no thing. In other words, the absence of anything. Now, if Ain just sat around nowhere doing nothing, it's a sure bet that nothing was going to get done. However, something happened to make Ain actually become nothing. Maybe it was nothing all along and just had to wake up to the fact. This new defined nothing, the Kabbalists called limitless nothing, or Ein Sof. The third kind of nothing is a hybrid Ein Sof called Ein Sof Aur, limitless light. I view this as the light bulb that goes off in the vastness of Ein Sof when it realizes the perfect notness of its nothingness. Nothing is not. This double negative is tantamount to saying something is. And it sets the stage for the first positive in the universe. And that first positive in the universe is one. Don't worry if none of this makes any sense to you right now. It's enough to remember that realization of the one is the second to the last goal of all Kabbalists. The final goal is to attain the consciousness of the nothing. And that's my th Saturday morning cartoons, third day of Hanukkah uh, message. Uh, tomorrow for Sunday school, uh, we probably won't go through all of these uh, uh, Ten Commandments. Then again, we may, but certainly there's uh, there's a couple that I wanted to uh, uh, to focus on, and uh, I hope you will be with us tomorrow. And uh, thank everybody for the for your kind words for uh, the our program yesterday uh, with Saint Constance uh, uh, and her. Uh, reading of Librizzati and her marvelous exegesis on uh, on Librizzati. We had a good time. We had a lot of fun. And uh, we got a lot of 
uh, nice, uh, nice comments. And Constance and I both thank you very much and, uh, and appreciate and are delighted by your, your comments. So until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.